Hey guys, even here, welcome to another video. In this video, we have a couple of very interesting stories, but we're gonna start with our current classic physique Mr. Olympia champion, actually four times champion, Chris Bumstead, with a little posing video of him a couple of weeks before the Mr. Olympia, before, as he says, he had to make the weight. And he adds this suspicious eyes emoji, which is kind of trying to tell us what would I look like if I did the open, if I did not have to make the weight? And here in this video, he does look much bigger. Take a look at this, guys. So what do you think if this guy actually decided to do the open and he actually did say that he wants to try it for fun? Look at him here. Now here he looks much, much bigger than he looked on the Mr. Olympia stage. Obviously, conditioning is not as, as peeled as it was on the stage but he still looks very much conditioned he probably looks as conditioned as most open guys but he just doesn't have the same look when he's a little bit off with conditioning especially like in the back now i'm not sure how this would look like if he was properly carved up if he was dehydrated but yeah i would say his conditioning does look like the majority of the of the open however i based on this video i don't think he would do that well in the open could he win an open show Hell, I don't know, maybe, maybe some shows, there are a lot of pro shows, a lot of bodybuilders that are not super, super impressive win pro shows and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. I mean, of course, they look impressive if they qualify for the Mr. Olympia, but I was talking about compared to like the top guys, the top 10 or top 20, because there were like 30 something guys on the Mr. Olympia stage. So the guys from the last call out, maybe Chris would be able to beat them. Maybe even some of the guys from the third call out, as far as the first two call outs, I don't think so. Now, as you can see right here, some poses look very good, like this side chest pose. I think he could challenge guys like even Rafael Brandau, who is top 10 in the world right now in the open. But it's only one pose. And sure, Chris would look really good in the lat spread, in the absent ties, some other poses like front double as well, maybe. But he does lack the size that most open guys actually have. Even like this, even like even like this when he is like I don't know, four weeks out of Mr. Olympia, where he's not completely um, dehydrated and, and depleted and, and like shredded to the bone as he was on the Mr. Olympia stage. Even like this, a little bit fuller, a little bit bigger. I still don't think he would do that well in the open, but look at the back right here, uh, it's not like the best shadow, he should not have taken this video on this lighting, because it just shows how shallow, how small his back actually is, compared to the open guys of course, like in classic physique he's the biggest guy, he's the freakiest guy, but compared to the open guys, you know, he would get dwarfed really. Here is a very interesting comparison that I found on Instagram, and as you can see right here, especially from the front, the other two guys, Hari Chopin and Derek Lansford, and these are, of course, the top two guys in the Open. These are the best bodybuilders, Open bodybuilders in the world right now. As you can see, they're kind of dwarfing Chris, with legs, with arms in particular, also with lats, with just overall mass. From behind, from the back, it's, you know, not that much of a difference, but still, it's an obvious difference. Like, this guy, Chris Bumstead, couldn't really hang with these guys if he decided to do the Open, like Open Olympia. But again, he probably could win a little bit lower level pro show, I think so. In order to further prove my point, I'm gonna use this comparison that I found on IG as well. And as you can see, this is Rafael Brandau compared to the Mr. Olympia Hari Chopin. And Rafael Brandau is a little bit more than just slightly over the weight cap in classic physique. So he would have to really struggle to make the weight in classic. And I think it's pretty much impossible. So that's why he doesn't do it. So he's a he's actually a big guy. I mean, he's top 10 in the world. He was able to beat Ian Valier, Michael Crijo, uh, guys like Charles Griffin, uh, Patrick Johnson. So he's a proper bodybuilder. But compared to Hadi, he looks very small, right? There is obviously a huge difference in legs, but also in overall mass. Hari Chopin is just a much, much bigger bodybuilder than Raphael. And so the question is, 
Could Chris Bumstead beat, for example, Rafael Brandau? Because these guys compare well. Rafael is definitely the smallest guy in top 10 at the Mr. Olympia. I'm pretty sure all the other guys in the top 20 are bigger than him. Maybe even all the guys in the Open, really. But still, he managed to beat top 10. So, if Chris can overtake him, then Chris maybe can do really well in the Open. So, can Chris Bumstead beat somebody like Rafael Brandau? I don't think so because of this. I think this is basically the main reason why Rafael placed so well. It's his back. He really improved that back. And as you can see, yeah, Hadi's back double is probably his weakest pose. But as you can see, Rafael is beating him in this one. Yeah, it seems like it. You can't even see the big difference in leg size or glutes. Like, he's, he's matching him in that area. But he has probably bigger and harder back. Again, Hadi's back double is probably his worst pose, but his back lat spread is definitely not. It's a strong pose for him because he has a lot of muscle in those lats. However, again, Rafael is holding his own against Hadi in this one. So that's why I don't see Chris Bumstead beating somebody like Rafael, because even though he has a really impressive back, he's just not as massive as Rafael. And even though he could be bigger if he didn't die down too hard, I still don't think he would make top 10 in the Open, Mr. Olympia, or even top 20 for that matter. Now, if Chris Bumstead took like two or three years off and really blasted gear and tried to get as big as possible, then it would probably be a different story. Then we could talk about him potentially cracking the top 10 in the Mr. Olympia in the Open. But right now, the way things are, I don't see that happening. If you guys disagree with me, you can tell me down below in the comment section. Please do so. Tell me whatever you think about this topic. All right, next story is really interesting. It seems like Terence Ruffin is actually moving to bodybuilding. I'm guessing 212 bodybuilding. Chris Bumstead, he's just fooling around, he's just saying, uh, just hypothetically, how he would look if he did the Open, because he looks good uh, four weeks out, he looks bigger, much bigger than he looks on stage, so he showed us that video, in which he does look very impressive, but here is the post of Terence Ruffin, which really makes me think, what does this mean, and does this really mean that he's actually switching to bodybuilding, he says, here's a physique update about four weeks post-show, right now the goal is just to get health markers in a good place over the next two-ish months, while maintaining this body composition, from, from there, we'll up the training volume and frequency, and work on growing as much tissue as possible, Guys, guys, I'm sure you know that Terence barely made the weight cap. Actually, when they were measuring his weight, he was over his weight limit. He wasn't under the limit. He was not on point. He was over. So they gave him some extra time to make the weight and he had to do some cardio on an escalator with a bunch of clothes on and somehow he managed to lose some water and to make the weight so he's at the limit, at the very limit. And what he wants to do right now is to grow as much tissue as possible. Why? Why Why would he do that if he doesn't want to do another division like 212? As you can see, right now he's uh, 187 pounds, uh, which is probably somewhere around where he was on a Mr. Olympia stage on, in classic physique. I think that is around his weight cap, so he has like 20 pounds or more to add before he reaches the weight cap in 212. He's a shorter guy, so if he wants to do the 212, he can do that division. Does this mean that he's going to make a transition? In the comment section, somebody asked him this question. Where are you looking <laughs> to put on the new tissue? And he says, hamstrings, back, arms, forearms and calves. And this guy replies, you want all the muscles, as you should. And he says, I had to stop myself from saying everywhere, which is what he really means. He wants to gain as much muscle as possible everywhere. If he actually does that successfully, will he be able to make the weight in classic? Hell no. He did not make the weight. He barely made the weight with extra time by doing that cardio session on escalator with like three jackets. So that's how he made the weight. If he actually does what he says he wants to do, which I'm sure he will do, because, you know, he, he, if he decides to do it, he can do it. I'm sure he has the genetics for it. If he wants to grow a lot of tissue everywhere, he can do it. And once he does that, there is no way he can make the classic. So this probably means 
Terence is moving from classy. He's moving to to twelve to bodybuilding. It's not gonna be Brion Ainsley. Brion Ainsley talked about this. He doesn't want to do it. And even if he wanted to, I don't think he would do that well because he's like forty five right now, he, uh, or forty four, something like that. And he can't grow that much. But Terence is a young guy. He can grow. Like he can gain those twenty pounds in a couple of years and be really competitive in two twelve. So if he really wants to do it, if he has the ambition for it, I'm sure he can do really well in two twelve. But I think he's a great classic physique guy. Unfortunately, he didn't play that well this year. His conditioning was a little bit off, but as you can see, he looked decent. He was just overshadowed by so many taller guys, if you ask me. And the competition overall was uh, way more competitive this year in classic physique. So that's why he didn't do that well. Uh, can he improve his placement in the Mr. Olympian classic physique from this point? I'm sure he can. But if he says he wants to grow tissue everywhere uh, as much muscle as possible then this probably means he's not staying in classic because if he does that successfully there will be no chance of him actually making the weight next year all right and lastly we have an update a physique update of dorian yates this is dorian yates in 2023 and as you can see he looks pretty freaking shredded right now considering all the factors like he's not even weightlifting for a long long time he is doing some yoga some cycling stuff like that i think he's eating he's not eating a lot of meat he's eating something like sort of a, a vegetarian diet not really but he's eating a lot of vegetables he's not really eating a lot of protein and still he maintains a lot of muscle and he did not gain a gram of body fat as you can see he's really lean right now at the age of 60 that's right dorian is 60 years old and in a couple of months in april he will be 61 at, at 60 years of age look at his physique look at the body fat look at the legs as well and look at the abs overall he looks really impressive but more importantly he looks happy he looks happy and healthy and i wish him all the best in this new life that he chose after bodybuilding he is one of the one of the rare bodybuilders who actually successfully retired and reinvented themselves and they don't do bodybuilding anymore at all they found happiness something else entirely and again i'm happy for dorian and i have to say he looks damn good for a 60 year old anyways guys whatever you think tell me down below in the comment section like this video if you enjoyed it and for more bodybuilding content like this subscribe to my channel guys thank you so much for watching all the best and bye bye